pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll move on to the open public meeting statement pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting was sent to the Cranberry Press, Trent Times, and Home News Tribune on January 6, 2023, posted on the township website and sent to those who requested a copy of this notice. We'll move on to roll call next. Mrs. El Badawi? Here. Mrs. Kinnear? Here. Dr. Rogers? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. And Mayor Fronte? Here. Here. Thank you. Excellent. So welcome everyone in the room and online. Tonight we are um, going to have the public hearing on our proposed 2023 budget. Um, we'll go through some reports and communications and then we have uh, one ordinance for second reading tonight and some resolutions. So um, with that, we will turn it over to Ms. Marabella for the um, public hearing on the proposed 2023 budget. And you tell me when you want me to advance the slides. Okay, yeah, I'll let you know. So good evening, tonight we're here to uh, adopt the Township of Cranberry 2023 municipal budget. As well, it's probably hard for you to see, but um, the total budget for 2023 is 14516561 Last year's budget was 12873011 um, As we go through it, I'll explain to you that the major difference this year is that we have put a million dollars set aside to work on capital projects. Um, next slide. Budget history from 2018 through 2023. You can see the trend of the budget goes up slightly each year, um, as does the amount to be raised by tax, but we've stayed pretty stable. The middle number is less grants and note pay down and additional um, capital improvement funds so that you can see the actual operating expense and the trend. Um, and so we've been stable um, from 2018 through 2023, even earlier than 2018. Next. Our budget's made up of revenues, which have to balance off our operating expenses. So as you can see, our total anticipated revenues are 14516561 I've broken them down into categories. There's tax revenue, which makes up the biggest amount. Um, there's miscellaneous revenues. There are special items. State aid is 3%. Um, this year, we're using 2285000 in um, surplus again a million of that is set aside for capital projects and then um, as of now this is the amount of grants that we have on the books as the year goes on we will receive other grants and that'll get added to the budget Next, here's our detail of surplus so um, revenues that come in come in from fees come in from uh, energy receipts tax, um, hotel tax, our municipal court revenues that balance off our operating expenditures. All these things make up our revenues, and then in order to balance to our operating expense, we have to use surplus. And as you can see, with the surplus, I have what was available at the beginning of each year, what was used each year, and then what was replaced. In 2022, we used 1.8 million, we replaced 2.3, that's really good, especially in this economy. Um, and so we are going to use 2.3, um, about 2.3 of surplus in 2023 to balance our budget. We are estimated um, to bring in less in 2023 because added assessments are, are not going to be as large. We don't anticipate as they were in 2022. This is our average assessment by tax rate. The average um, household assessment in 2023 is 606,563. I received that number from the tax assessor. As you can see, our municipal open space is two cents and it stayed pretty much the same. Um, then the municipal tax, again, uh, 2309 in 2020, 2303 in 2023. So we have stayed stable all these years. No increase anticipated for 2023 taxes. When we're doing our budget, we always spend a large amount of time on our capital projects because capital projects will eventually turn into debt, which we have to offset with 
things like surplus. So um, future capital projects from 2024 through 2027, and these are only what I know of. A lot of things pop up each year that we add on. Um, we're running close to five million. Um, we have signage, these are the bigger ones. Um, fire company expenses over the next couple of years. Police, H police HVAC, pistol replacement, which is on a rotating schedule. Um, the bike network plan, major road repairs, uh, 2.2 million each year. We are trying to take on repairs of township roads um, that are not county or DOT roads. Um, the all-inclusive playground, should we decide to move forward with that? Um, pickleball courts as well, if we decide to move forward with that. Energy audit improvements, if we move forward, and then sewer improvements um, over the next few years. And lastly, we look at our future debt payments and our tax rates um, and whether those um, debt payments are going to be going up and down and how that's going to affect our tax rate. Um, as you can see in 2023, it did not have an effect on taxes. 2024, we will probably have to float a bond. We have not floated one since 2019. So that will increase um, probably our, our debt payments um, enough to have to look at our tax rate um, or balance it with surplus. And then we go back to zero because some of our other debt will be retiring over the next couple of years. So it's a balancing act. So that's where we are. There'll be no municipal tax increase for 2023. And now, I guess we can open it up to the hearing. Yeah. So first, any members of the Township Committee that would like to comment on the, the budget items? Yeah. 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 Ms. Malbo, thank you very much. I mean, you've, you've done a very good job over the last, over in good times and in bad, you've been, um, this I remember, paraphrasing from the marriage ceremony I did last week, but um, in sickness and in poor. Now you've, um, you've done a great job of sort of uh, stewarding the township through the through mean times and, and um, managing that surplus, so thank you. You're welcome. So good. At this point, um, any other township committee member want to comment? Um, if at this point, if any member of the public would like to comment on the proposed budget, please, now's the time to come forward and please do so and just, uh, Write your write your name and street, and hit the button on the right to get your microphone live. Thank you. Richard Callen, when would. I just have a question. I noticed there was something for $150,000. I had trouble reading it. It said police, court, bail, or something. I wasn't sure. Um, the 150000 for pickleball, pickleball courts. What was, what was the pickleball, pickleball courts? Pick, there was a proposal. Oh, I said pickleball court. Mm -hmm. Pickleball court. The proposal is for, um, it's a. I better cut my glasses next time. It is small, yeah. <laughs> it is the, they're the courts that, that split a tennis court. Oh. No, I just, yeah. I just read a walk. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the public that have questions? Okay, great. Well, Ms. Maribel, again, thank you very much for uh, all your work on this. Great. Um, we will move on to the next section of the agenda is Township Committee Minutes from the regular meeting of February 27th and the closed session of February 27th. Um, do we have a motion to approve those? Um, Madam Clerk, do we need to adopt that resolution? I was thinking yes. yes. <laughs> to adopt the public hearing? Yeah. The resolution, ah. 0223. Ah, the resolution, yeah, yeah. 0223024, municipal budget. Could someone move that um, resolution? Uh, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Kinnear. We'll move on to roll call, Mrs. El Badawi. Yes. Um, Ms. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Fronte? Yes. Now we'll move on to Township Committee Sorry. minutes of February 27th and closed session of February 27th. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve those minutes. Thank you, Ms. El, by the way. I'll second. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to roll call. Mrs. El Badawi? Yes. Mrs. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Scott? Uh, I'll abstain. From both, right? Yep. 
Okay, thank you. And Mayor Fronte. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We will move on to reports and communications from the members of the committee. And why don't we start from right to left in the picture up there. So maybe Mr. Scott, you can go first. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I attended the, the parks meeting uh, last Wednesday, Wednesday morning. A um, couple of things. Uh, one, they talked again about the uh, uh, historical baseball game which was going on August 12th in Village Park. Um, details are forthcoming, but that will be a fun event for the town. Um, there was uh, apparently there's some low spots along the paved path in Heritage Park, um, causing some, some mud to accrue along the path there. Um, and they want to see if, uh, if DPW can, can help uh, uh, clear some of that out temporarily, maybe put up some cones. This has been an ongoing problem that we've looked into. And honestly, there's not much that can be done because of low lying in those spots. Um, we've looked at it. Um, we've even put some money aside to, to deal with it. And our engineer keep coming back to the same thing. It's not going to work. It is what it is out there. Filling that in, it's just going to come back and become mud again when it's raining and wet. I'm not really sure what we can do. Okay. Um, so then, understanding that was probably the answer, they want to know if, if there can be money set aside for the budget next year. Okay. It's it, We have money aside. It's not okay. that. It's that the engineer can't come up with a viable solution that's going to work in where it is in those spots. He's, he's looking, but... Liberty Way Bridge miniature. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? See Two million dollars. We we are looking at a porous concrete for the uh, the new village um, path, right? Can that can can a portion of that be porous, something or the other? I don't know because of the elevation of it. I'm not sure it's going to matter. I don't really know. We could ask Tom. Okay. I think you're, you're talking about porous pavement. Well, we're using a porous something on that path. Is it a porous concrete or porous? All that does is allow kind? water to go through. And that's what we would want. We want the water to go through, not not pool and puddle. Okay. Anyway, that's an engineer question. <laughs> I'll check with Tom. <laughs> I don't know, but so I mean, Jerry has obviously looked at it. Yeah. There's I mean, no, there's, just, there's no easy fix. Yeah. There's no okay. easy yeah. fix for All right. it. Well, yeah. All, right. All right. Moving on. So they. Um, uh, you know, based on the, the report from the HPC about the uh, pavilion roof in Village Park, you know, we budgeted to replace it with asphalt. Um, the HPC said it'd be nice if we could look into possibly refurbishing the cedar. So uh, Parks is going to look into that. Uh, Mr. Kinnerum is, is going to uh, come back with a number, but he said the estimated cost was a little south of $4,000, which would be significantly cheaper than replacing it, and it would, you know, retain the aesthetic look of the of the cedar shape shingles so um i expect to hear back um, at the next park meeting next month about that um they had a long discussion um and they were going to present at uh, the library board meeting this past thursday i'm sure uh, mayor Fronte can probably report back to us on what happened there but they they were looking into the possibility of installing concrete chess tables um just tables themselves for people to bring their own chess sets to play and or a, a, a giant uh, chessboard with, with movable chess pieces. Um, I'm not sure what transpired at the library board meeting, but this is something that the parks have been talking about for a while. And if um, it was my understanding that if there was not uh, uh, interest for the library board, they would look into possibly installing uh, concrete chess tables at another location, another park. So we'll see what comes of that. Um, they would also like to come before the TC at some point in the next uh, uh, half dozen meetings or so to talk about their 2022 accomplishments and their goals for 2023. So uh, Mayor Fronte, if you can help me find a date for that. Um, they also uh, brought up the fact that the, the Cranberry Chamber of Commerce, uh, Eric Harmon, is planning to host a picnic in Millstone Park uh, to coincide with the, uh, the Tour de Cranberry event on May, May 7th. Um, so look forward to more details on that. And finally, um, I was asked to inquire um, for clarification on the timing of the bid process for both pickleball and for the uh, inclusive playgrounds. They wanted to know if um, pending the results of the 
the engineer study to look at both possible um, um, capital projects if they could actually start the bid process prior to our January meeting. <laughs> but ask. Know, have to wait until next year. I mean, that's what was decided at capital budget time that we would set money aside for them to do their research and then come back to the committee in 2024 to ask for more money to do the projects. So. Okay. And that was part of this. Was there discussion to review the open space plan as yeah. part of that? Whose action that is, in, is that? In, in, that's in process. Uh, that Liz Lahaney, our town planner, okay. is, is working on that. Yep. Yep. Matt, can I ask you a question just regarding the, um, the pavilion, the roof of the pavilion? Yeah. It sounds like they're moving towards the direction of repair rather than replace. Is that my understanding? That's That was my understanding. So yeah. what's changed? Because I feel like last year when they were discussing it it was something about we could not it was not repairable it had to be replaced i'm not sure what transpired i know the hpac we all received a copy of this hpac uh, came back with a, a, a long letter and, and detailed pictures and discussion of, of the the value of, of retaining the, the cedar shake and you know you know we put asphalt on there in glass but it wouldn't be as historically correct i guess well, i don't know or, or is charming i mean yeah, it's or very has charming, charming there, I guess, yeah. better word for it um, so they, um, they they took that to heart and they looked into it and I, I believe they're considering repair. So, so that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rogers. Okay, hi there. Um, so um, I went to a couple of uh, Zoom meetings. Um, one was uh, about the energy municipal audit and how to move forward on that. I reached out to Sustainable Jersey and uh, Teresa Vaccaro, who's part of the green team, was there. Um, Tracy Woods, she's part of the energy um, group there. Um, and basically I received some technical assistance on how to proceed with the municipal energy audit recommendations. And um, where, where I'm kind of stuck and, and they're unsticking um, and unsticking us is um, how to get a quote for the recommendations. Um, and it's going to require a request for proposal. And what's wonderful is there is a model one and they will call and they were gonna most likely fill it out for, for us so that we'll be able to get um, quotes and we could you know, see what, what works and what doesn't. And um, so stay tuned. Um, I attended a Southern Middlesex County freight study um, uh, Zoom and um, basically reviewed um, where this study stands. Um, they had a public engagement December 7th in Monroe. Over 100 attendees went and uh, you know uh, gave comment and listened to what uh, you know, uh, what they had to say. Um, this this meeting uh, they did a presentation on the data analysis and there were just some highlights. Um, and draft recommendations. And um, you should have seen in your email um, to, to take a look at their recommendations. You know, right now it's at this level. Um, and then they hope to get um, uh, get this out to the public and, and it, um, you know, and get, get feedback and then uh, they'll move it forward. Um, so uh, but, the major um, area that they were really looking at was the exit and entrance to route, to exit 8A um, and how they could rec make recommendations for better movement in that area. And there were other ones too, but you'll see it when you look at um, I also attended um, a grant information overview presentation for the MS4 um, permit. Um, and that has to, uh, so, um, um, so the, the New Jersey DEP has made $25,000 available um, so that we can um, update, so that we can make um, a map of our stormwater infrastructure. Um, and then um, I attended um, a meeting with, at the, at the school, um, Olivia Shea, who's the eighth grade um, president and uh, participates in PEAKS. I think that stands, uh, I didn't write down what it stands for, but- um, Perspective Equity Action Club. 
Thank you. I had it written down somewhere else, but didn't transfer it. Thank you. Um, and as you can tell, Michael was there too. Um, and um, it's uh, really, um, uh, you know, she really wants to partner. And so about a Holocaust memorial, she walks to school and sees there's memorials for many things. And the one um, that's not there is a Holocaust memorial. And we talked about locations, possible locations. And she really wants to do it, um, you know, partner with the town, um, the school, the library. And, um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's moving forward. And I think there were some good uh, recommendations and some good discussion on how to move forward on possibly doing this project. And um, oh, oh um, so the kiosk on Main Street um, over by the West Track Lane, is that, is that, is that West Track Lane? What's that called? West property, West property. Um, so um, there was some open space information in there, um, and you know, some it had to be tweaked. And when when we tried to tweak, when it tried to get tweaked, um, we found that the lock, um, you know, there was some problems with the uh, opening and closing of the door. So right now, you'll see that it's uh, it's empty of information, and we're going to give Jerry some time to take a look at it um, and see, you know whether we can put that material back in um, and or and just renovate the kiosk or whether it needs to be you know completely redone for next year possibly as a capital um, you know if that's approved for a capital project and um, I'm just sitting here staring over Matt's shoulder at the sustainable Jersey so um, there it is I am thank you um, so um, there was a bronze year missing so now that um, that's a lot of work right there. Um, so that we have the three bronze and the silver this year. Um, so it's been how many years? Now? Three, twelve years. We've been a sustainable Jersey uh, town, and we finally have moved up to silver, and they're all on there now. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, any questions? I read the freight study. Is like 36 pages long. I encourage everyone else to read it too. And when you're reviewing it, I may have missed it, but I didn't see Station Road 130 South covered in that in any of the recommendations. That left turning lane when you're going east on the station. And it gets crazy backed up, as everybody knows, and it's forcing people to kind of use that U turn across from the Higgerman property on 130, which is insanely dangerous and there's already been a fatality there so that's the one thing if you guys go through it and you read it and you find it and i missed it let me know but it would be i know you were asking for feedback on it now's the time to do that but that's the one piece that i just i could have missed it because it was a lot of data but it was great and i totally agree 8a is where that recommendation is so you you've given that recommendation no i haven't i just i i read it today okay, okay. in preparation for tonight and I just think I missed it, but I think if it's, if it's not in there, I think that we should bring it to someone's attention. That so, all should go to. Andrew. Yep, that's what I saw today. But I did, if you guys, you get into the detail of it, if I just missed it, I'll read it again, but just ask me. Say it anyway. It, okay. It's a great thing to just mention if that's really something that, you know, that obviously it's a cranberry thing. And what happens is we're a small town, you know, South Brunswick, Monroe, et cetera, you know, so it's great. They really do appreciate What I can comments. see happening is people making a right on Station Road and then going into the neighborhoods inside of Cranberry and making U-turns. Not tractor trailers, but I can see people figuring it out, doing the math and say, this is faster for me to do this than anything else. So that I could just see a potential problem. So so what, what do you advise that many of us make, you know, if we're all agreeing that this is a concern. So do many of us make the same recommendation does one recommendation come out of the town? Well, so you're going to read it, and whatever recommendations each of you have, send them to Andrew, and he's going to send a so letter then. Okay. okay. So it sounds like send it to Andrew for his Send it to Andrew. Yeah. By the 19th. Yeah, yeah okay. everyone. Right, just that's for everyone to know, too. By March, the 19th. Have a question. March 19th. Thank you. You, you mentioned um, $25,000 available for a uh, study of the map. So the MS4 is a permit for, um, you know, um, for stormwater uh, infrastructure, and um, it, it, this is new now that we need to be in the next three years a 
a map needs to be done of all our stormwater infrastructure. And the DEP has made for every, um, there's tier one and tier, tier A, or tier one and tier two. And um, was that? I think it was tier A. A and, and yeah, okay. Now we're all, uh, we're in tier A and anyone that's in tier A, whatever that, you know, however that's designated, um, get $25,000 if you just fill out, and it's a simple grant. It's supposed to be very streamlined and simple grant. The engineer's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was my question. Is who yeah. prepares? But yeah. um, the we'll, it's just on the side. We'll, we'll have you know. We also have money side set aside yeah. in the budget because we knew this was coming for Van Cleef to work on it. So this will just help out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Miss okay. Kinnear. Okay. Um, Edak. Um, met uh, I think the first Wednesday of the month. Um, PS project is up for town. Whole PS project is up for final review tonight. I'll go through a presentation for everybody in a few. Um, they are asking for April 10th uh, for about 15 minutes at the absolute most on our schedule and agenda to present their 22 accomplishments, 23 goals, and an update on EDAC in general. And then um, they are also working with HBC. There's been a liaison signed with HBC on the overall signage project um, so they're now working in tandem together uh, changer of chamber of commerce as uh, matt mentioned set for may 7th as a kind of a cranberry heritage day um, they would like to begin the process to have some food trucks present because nothing says 1713 like empanadas <laughs> uh, but we'll work with them on a on that process and we know that's being revised right now but we'll help them out with that um, if you haven't seen it, there's a new video that's been added to the Chamber of Commerce website, which actually features several of our township committee members on there and their families, and it really makes you want to live here. So if you want to check it out, it's awesome. Um, and then the recent testimonial was added to the Chamber of Commerce website, and I'd like to take a quick second to read it to you. Uh, since 1985, Robbie Rossi Labs has worked closely with uh, county and local townships across central New Jersey. Only in Cranberry have we built a true partnership approach on us and our business needs. It proves why so many large, sophisticated manufacturers like Rossi Labs wants to do business here. Nowhere else in New Jersey can our employees benefit from small town charm with township leaders who understand the complex needs of their corporate residences. So I thought that was really nice and it's posted on Chamber of Commerce, so I want to know that. Um, historic preservation. If you haven't seen it in the reference section of the library, there's actually an HPC section in the library. So if you don't know any of the history of Cranberry, there's multiple books there that are um, all focused and f photographic books as well. And it's all about the history of Cranberry and it's in the reference section. So it's really kind of cool if you want to check it out. Um, the railing on Brainerd Lake, I think um, Denise and I spoke and the county agreed that they would come out and look at straightening it out. If you haven't seen it, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, it's this kind of crooked piece of the railing on the west side of the rail and when stepped on, it can kind of get dislodged. So we're hoping if we um, make it a safety concern, it might be some sense of urgency. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but it would be cool if that would expedite the county's interest. And I think Stephen Galsano actually put a drawing together as a recommendation to move that process along and get it fixed. And then um, they also, we had uh, Delpha uh, Georges, who was previously an EDAC member, stepped up while I was out of town, presented the presentation I'm going to give you guys tonight on the kiosk and um, resounding uh, approval by the HPC on the kiosk. Uh, their one concern was that there are bulbs, flower beds that they're in there that we're gonna propose and they wanna make sure that spring has sprung, that we don't dislodge them because it actually would enhance the kiosk, but that's in that presentation, I'll get to that. And then Board of Health, the rabies clinic um, parameters were approved. It'll be dogs only at the firehouse and now looking for a date in the fall. That's it. Do you want to quickly go through your EDAC presentation too? Yeah. Knowing that a lot of the constituents have approved this. Sure. Uh, go through. So um, just tell me when, uh, tell me what you want to. Next slide. All right, good. I can also show it here. Okay, so um, the kiosk that we're going to 
kiosk uh, is a town, township kiosk um, that um, is being proposed and located right outside here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, which is being proposed, uh, this kiosk to be located right outside Town Hall. The um, objective of it, so that's easy to spot, uh, it's aesthetically pleasing, obviously, quick place to gather information and build community um, as Cranberry is friendly and welcoming. Next slide. So the kiosk, the Town Hall kiosk um, was in disrepair. EDEF kicked off a project in January 2022 to replace it. Uh, the objective is to replace it, to continue to provide a center point for Cranberry Township communication and residents, replace it with more robust materials so it can withstand time and natural elements, and then also to take advantage of changing it while changing its orientation. So it's actually parallel uh, configuration to Town Hall. Excellent. So timeline real quick. They kicked it off in January 22 when um, the TC liaison became Mrs. Elbadawi as Matt Scott was transitioning off of EDAC as a liaison. There's a subcommittee on EDAC called Enhance the Experience. So they were designated as the project manager. EDAC identified stakeholders as our township committee, zoning, historical preservation commission, board of education, DPW, and township administration. EDAC gained uh, quotations of multiple sizes, price points, and styles. Final kiosk design was uh, chosen, location, and orientation. And then through um, the RTC liaison, stakeholders were consulted and an agreement was agreed upon on the design, location, and orientation. And our timeline continues that the kiosk was actually ordered on the 16th of November, delivered on the December 21st. This is where it gets a little interesting. The company was a little bit misleading, or a lot misleading, on their website. And the dimensions of the kiosk did not include the two posts on either side, thus adding up seven and a half inches to the overall size of the project. So um, our liaison and DPW reviewed the installation location, agreed the kiosk would not fit in the agreed uh, location. And you'll see that on the next slide. Um, we then since had a transition and kind of recircled around to all the constituents that we mentioned earlier to discuss proposed changes while the orientation and the kiosk design obviously remains the same. So, some graphics for you. This is the original proposed location of the new kiosk, same location as the old kiosk, just the orientation. So this is an old snapshot of Town Hall, as you can see from the ground. So the next slide will show you, based on the increase um, uh, anticipated, unanticipated width of the kiosk, it will actually hit the retaining wall or the concrete, thus it's compromising two surfaces. So um, this is the actual kiosk. The backboard will be black, but the outside will be white. So it's the same concept design as the original. So the new proposed location of the new kiosk uh, is to move the kiosk approximately four feet to the left. Again, the orientation, which is now parallel to Town Hall and the design remains the same. It's just moving the location be into dirt uh, versus brick pavers. Uh, there might be a little overhang into the brick, but those bricks are common, much like the pavers. Um, and then we would replace, uh, repair the uh, pavers of the old kiosk location. Uh, the new kiosk dimensions are 50, next slide, I'm sorry. New kiosk dimensions are 55 by 48. Uh, DP and W and VOA, VOE assess this and feel it is less disruptive to the brick. DPW will cut back the existing hedge to not impact. There's a floodlight that shines up on town halls. So we want to make sure we don't hit that. And HPC mentioned that there are, again, maybe flower bulbs there. And that can actually enhance the look of the kiosk, which would be really pretty in the spring. So let's not screw with those. But I'm not, I'm not sure what those are. And yes, my dog did pee there. That's the wet spot while I was taking measurements. So thank you, Monty, for your contribution to this project. So. Anyway, that's the tape measure on the ground. Okay, great. So next steps. Um, EDAC appointed a new project manager, so Derek Hahn decided to step up with Delpha transitioning off. Um, we um, had Delpha, she was gracious enough to attend the HPC meeting, reviewed this presentation with full agreement to proceed from them on the 7th, and then provide this presentation um, to you guys um, this evening. 
And then if granted approval for installation, what will be ongoing is me keeping everybody informed as we move into installation. That is as fast as I can do. That's great. All right. I mean, Lisa, I think the, the fascinating part about this was the list of stakeholders that you had to go to on I this. I didn't. No, 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 did it no, first. I, no and I guess, like, to do I mean, like, and this is sort of a classic municipal project where it's like it touches, it touches two different organizations, three different committees, you know, and I, I just, I want to, I, I, I want to thank the team of the three of you, number one, Matt, for starting this with EDAC on for driving this for a year and putting this on your, your own credit card <laughs> as well that's yeah and then uh, and then and michael Lisa, two two different mayors yeah two different <laughs> mayors, exactly. I mean, so i mean th this is this is sort of the story of how this how these projects are going to work but i think you, you've come to what you've proposed is a really good really nice solution you know, so I, I thank you for sure. for the time and it's frustrating is for to take a while i think to get all those stakeholders on board, it's, it's, it's important. I feel everyone on this DS has had a kiosk, right? You've had yeah. some form of this type yeah. of project. So this is my first one. I have a one strike now, so pretty excited. Oh. But any questions that I can answer? I, I just would like to make a comment. Um, so 25 years ago, we were at the Walker door, and I, I noticed that kiosk. And one of the first things that I asked was about that kiosk last year. and. So I'm so glad that this got moved forward and actually done. So this is great. You've, you've done a wonderful job, Lisa, so thank you. Absolutely. Uh, note to mention, EDEC is fully aware the keys to this kiosk, they're under uh, township administration. So the only information that goes in there has to be approved and come through here. So it's not a garage sale, you need a babysitter, pull a slip here type of a kiosk. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's to be used for. It's to be used for exactly what the objective in this present state, the presentation stated. So I just want to be very clear can you, about that too. Can you expand what's the actual process? When someone comes in and they, and they, and they want to put something up, they have to go to Denise? Or? Well, I mean, it's probably, it, I, I imagine the principle is similar to what we would put out as an e-blast. If, if it's a township organization or a nonprofit, those would be the, those would be the primary criteria for it. So if it's township, township affiliated, or, or you know, and or if it's a nonprofit that operates out of town, so I think that would be the, to, to be consistent, those would be the sort of the guidance. Okay. It's also to amplify things yeah. that are going on in the town. So it's pretty much all the things that you see that are on our face of our township website. Yeah. This would be a replication okay. of that for yeah. people that don't sign so, up. So nothing commercial, my question. So no, the cranberry end is having a Absolutely. You know, overnight. Correct. Okay. Are they? I'm kidding. Sure. I'm kidding. No, I mean, that's, and I think that's the, that's the natural tension with like our yeah. EDAC where it's like yeah. EDAC is supporting our businesses. Yeah. This is a township case. There's some natural give and take there. Um, so, but I, I think this is that that's the rules for a township gotcha. case. Gotcha. Is it, is it lit? No. no. Okay. And, uh, just, I can't really see. But looking at the side, it looks like there's something under. That's the graphic that was that's photoshopped the onto it. That I pulled from yeah. the website. It's, it's open. On, it's, it's a very small picnic table yeah. that it's, we plan it's, on putting there. It's open <laughs> underneath. Like, it's open, so you should see the bush underneath. It's not like a portal. <laughs> no, no. Oh. I'll look yeah. into that, but um, I don't trust the website's information. It's so so any, any, it sounds like thumbs up, concurrence on moving forward. Yes, for yes, this. yes. So, Wonderful okay. job. Uh, Lisa, any idea on a timeline and whether the taking down of the old kiosk will coincide with the putting up of the new one? I think we could all go out there and give it one kick and that kiosk yeah, yeah, yeah. will come down <laughs> so we can all take a swing at it. But um, from what I know that we definitely wanted to get this done prior to the referendum work starting at the school, which will begin when school is over in June. So I would think the depends on Jerry and um, Mr. Gallagher, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Those guys working together to do it. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Let's have a quick question. Um, is it the is it chips or is it HPC um, that that has that area in the library for the history? HPC is what I was told. Yeah. yeah so well, so there's there's two things I was going to clarify there. Yeah, the, that, I was just the curious. history center. Okay. Is the climate controlled space that they just put in the installed right? That is HP C HPS. Yeah. Okay. That has that. HPC has a section in the regular part of the library. Oh, okay, that's in the reference section. The reference section of the yeah. library that has HPC documents. So, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure which one you were speaking about. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Ms. Kinner. Ms. Elbethaway. 
It's hard to follow the kiosk presentation. <laughs> Uh, we had um, not so busy of a time, but we, we did. I attended the planning board meeting on March 2nd. The meeting started at 7 p.m. and ended at 10. Michael, I don't know if you wanted to more, more, more detail on it, but we did. We had we had three applications. I really didn't have too much to say. We had three applications, but it was two two separate entities that came forward. And um, do we ever do we go into details of what they were? Um, you can summarize if you want to. Yeah, I think it's one of them is. Dr. Rogers will find one of them very interesting. So, two of the applications from the same entity had to do with uh, solar. It was the Park Avenue Solar, the community solar, and so it was. Uh, it was nice to know that they're looking. They're more than looking. They're going to be installing uh, solar cells on uh, two different buildings, and so they will be. Uh, they will be contributing to. Not yet. Yeah, they'll be contributing to the, the energy. Production of the the G M, and then the other application had to do was LRAC, right? Enterprise Rent a Car. They were basically just sort of retroactively asking permission for something uh, for a structure that they've put up during COVID that made their lives easier uh, with regards to cleaning, you know, cleaning their cars within an enclosed uh, you know, area. Uh, but it was a very long meeting, and I felt like I really earned my way into that meeting. <laughs> Next time I know I will bring coffee. Uh, we also, let me see what happened. Oh, I wanted to actually thank the, um, the fire squad at the EMS for inviting us all to a wonderful banquet. I really had a good time and I'm sorry that I had to leave early because it was actually play night, the Cranberry play night. But congratulations to those that were recognized. I think you may have details about that that I don't. And the, the mayor's wellness campaign met and we were discussing um, conglomeration of events in town that uh, that pertain to the health and wellness of residents and so there are many different entities in town that are already taking care of things like this and so the idea is how can we pull all of that together so that number one we're not duplicating efforts number two so that it's kind of user-friendly and and easy to find for the residents and so I, I thought and I think that uh, Barbara Rogers was also of a similar mindset that we kind of direct them to the rec committee and maybe see if uh, with regards especially to senior citizen activities or activities for the senior citizens i believe there's a subcommittee there matt maybe that de yeah so maybe that they could talk i did direct them to the chairman to see if they would uh connect on on that and i think you'll be having be the first meeting of the year soon okay and um i wanted to just say that cranberry had a wonderful craft show as well last weekend it was well attended and i'm just putting a sort of a public service plea out there we have a lot of activities in town and we can always benefit from more volunteers whatever the activity is whatever you want to do you will find a place to volunteer in town i think that's it for me thank you uh, i'm really glad that you brought up this uh, community solar because that is um that is one of the objectives for the green team the environmental commission is to uh, eventually put together a program so that the public can know more about it and how to tap in because it will save you money thank you thank you yeah, so yes yeah, so i attended the planning board as well it, w it was very interesting to see a, a company come forward and sort of see how these solar projects are working because they were basically they weren't the owner of the land they were the people that were proposing to do the installation so it was kind of interesting to see how a project works and what kind of things the the planning board has to look at because you're talking about a warehouse that's set back you're going to have solar panels on the top of the building so it really was like where's the equipment that's on the ground going to be sited where's the thing that's going to you know what's going to go up the building um you know where when you're if they have to dig extra utilities what what the, what's the impact of that but very straightforward application and I mean, imagine you, you start to look at square footage and you look at the overhead shots that they gave, you start to think if, if all those warehouses in Cranberry had solar on them, we could literally be a net producer of electricity in New Jersey. So it's sort of an interesting, sort of an interesting um, sort of proposition. It was nice to see that the, the planning board process didn't inhibit, which is what is sort of a symbiotic kind of relationships. I thought that was, that was great. Um, the library board met on March 8th. Um, Sunday hours are coming, April 16th. 
So the library could not um, do summer Sunday hours in the old building, and we've been um, encouraging them to start that. So the idea is they're going to start with like a study break theme for high school students for AP tests and finals, where that they'll have a place to go to, to on Sundays for it'll be a four hour window um, for that. They're also working on a community um, a community survey for Library Week, and the library has also been very gracious to work with township staff on piloting uh, holding larger township meetings. Uh, in the large group room and we'll start with the april 6th planning board meeting so that will i don't think there's too much on the agenda but they're going to pilot it for a meeting and try that out and you know we have to notice it we have to the microphones work a little differently but the goal is to try it out there and make it work in that space the capacity of those room that room is 80 82 i think it is so definitely can hold more people than this space so when there's a large meeting and a large content and the live stream they've tested the live stream and that works as well so um, the History Center is uh, to, to coincide with Ms. Kinnearum's update on the, the HPC books. The History Center is, um, is a climate controlled separate space inside the library that has movable shelves that will hold the most precious history piece um, over, over the course of a year outside and see how people use it and what it looks like. So they're a little concerned about storage you know, maintenance and upkeep of sort of inheriting those chess tables. So they asked for pictures and they asked for diagrams and they didn't make a final decision, but they supportive of, of health supporting and making that happen. So as Ms. Wolf, by the way, said, I attended the first responders banquet Saturday night, um, fire company 48 and, and first aid squad 48 volunteers. Um, and there were amazing service awards up to 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, and 65 years of service. Mr. Lamont Haggerty um, had 65 years of service for the fire company. And evidently, he was the only guy who could operate 1852 uh, um, uh, rig. So it was great, it was great to see that. Um, I attended the 25th annual craft show um, at the Cranberry School and got to visit the new auxiliary gym. So it was a nice, uh, nice event. I attended the Cranberry School production of Mary Poppins. Um, it was a little bittersweet. It was the last show in that gymnasium. Uh, which it was very nice and nice nice production it was also the last um the last time that noel kinney hand painted the backdrop it was a beautiful backdrop um i think 15 or 18 feet tall the whole back of the area and uh they, they she has to use scaffolding and students cannot do it because you can't have students on scaffolding so she has taken it it's, it's a beautiful city view of london and the new space will have actually um computer projected graphics for a backdrop which is great. The students will get to do it, and then they'll get to project their art. But um, just to see that hand-painted, beautiful um, uh, cityscape that will be painted over or ripped down in June um, is just neat. And uh, Ms. Kinney runs the, um, she's the president of the Cranberry Arts Council, and she has helped every Cranberry school play and every eighth grade dance and every, you know, everything from her, from her first kid, who's, I think, 26, you know, all the way through beyond when she's even had a kid at the school. So that's been great to see. Um, <clears throat> I met with a Cranberry School Olivia, eighth, eighth grader Olivia, as Dr. Roger said, and we're we're looking kind of like a garden or low maintenance bulbs. Something is a Holocaust memorial. So, and I love the I love the idea through that perspective equity action club. Um, and also thanks to the Board of Health for developing a plan and endorsing the plan to get a rabies clinic back on the uh, back of the books. Um, I'm going to put a mayor's update out tomorrow. We'll talk uh, March 28th. Um, please, members of the township committee, please come to the new neighbors reception at the library. Um, they're inviting neighbors from new neighbors from the last two or three years. <clears throat> and uh, Cranberry School 125th anniversary, April 28th. Um, Townwide garage sales, April 29th. Um, and the tour to Cranberry and the 1713 house celebration on. May 7th. So a lot of exciting things going on this spring. Um, any questions for me? Uh, yeah, I have a, a couple questions. Um, going back to the planning board, I'm just curious, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but how is the, um, I, I know they're going to produce power. Is that just going to go directly back into the grid or is there going to be? It, it does, yeah. Okay. They, they, they work it out. And so Dr. Rogers, that's we, I don't, I don't know, we shouldn't get into yeah. it tonight, but it, yeah. you can sort of participate in, they can, people can that can can pay for and sort of allocate that power so that they're sort of a shine. But they have a, it's a state grant. They have to have an entire install done by November 
to be able to have take advantage of this program. So the state opens up these programs, they give them like 24 months to do this, and then they have to do it. So they are under the clock to come to us to get this project approved, to get it moving, and sort of make it all happen. Yeah. They, so. they apply to the Board of Public Utilities, and there's going to be more information about that this year, you know, and how to plug into it. But we have to do it as a community for us to get the, the best discount on right. it. And, and it's a leased roof. What they do is they lease the roofs of the right. houses, right. and then they plug it directly into the grid. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say one thing. So Monty was 65. Um, sitting next to him was George, and I can't remember his last name. But he is six months behind him. He's 96 years old. And the only reason why he's behind him is because he used to live not close enough to a plug. And it was so loud out there. I was like, what does a plug? What plug? Did you say plug? Yes, there used to be a bylaw that you had to be, the plug is a fire hydrant. So he never lived close enough. He would have joined earlier. But so next year, 96 year old will be 65 years in just fire. Uh, just a, a second question, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just curious, if the, again, I don't know the answer to this, but is the library keeping track of, of, of people using the library? Do they, they have are. numbers? Yeah, yeah, they, they have a door count. There's a people counter. Um, coming in the door, and I think one other location. Do they have any data yet? I mean, has there been an uptick since the new? Um, they do have data. I, do, I don't know offhand. I mean, I know that the opening day, there was 900 people that came to the opening day um, ceremony. So, there, the the goal of the survey that I encourage them to do is really to set a baseline of sort of what your perception of the library is. And so, there's a lot of like, how satisfied are you with the services? Do you think the library is the center of town? How do, so a lot of like questions that you could ask every year, yeah. So that you actually have growth, and yeah. you actually you yeah. actually build in that. Um, so so that the, the survey is really meant to sort of address that. And they're really the library is doing a great job. I think they've they've upped their level of programming, like fourfold from before the pandemic. Um, they have so much more space for it now. So um, they're trying a lot of things. They're sort of they're they're using the spaghetti approach. They're just doing all kinds of programming, see what sticks. Um, and the Sunday hours will be an experiment. And so they're sort of gathering data, seeing how it works, and then sort of seeing when, when's in fact. One of the questions will be like, when when would you like to use the library that you haven't been able to, how often do you use it, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of people have moved to town and were kind of mystified at our public library. And so people that have experienced a public library in another town, like there's things they're expecting from a public library right, exactly. that we've never yeah. had or seen. So the good news is the staff of the public library, the director and the technology director, have worked at many other libraries and have right. a lot of different right. perspectives. But, so yeah. they're they're sort of not weighted by any of the history of what the Cranberry Library was, and they're just focusing on what it should be. What it should be. So excellent. That's great. Yeah. And so what, is the, what are the hours for the uh, the new neighbor? Uh, seven to seven. I think seven to whatever on the twenty eighth. It'll probably go more than an hour, but and there'll be organizations there to like welcome them and stuff. So that'll be nice. Yeah. Do you know how to remove yourself from a GPS location? Because the Cranberry Library has three addresses in GPS. They have Old here. They've got Main Street. I think the PCB right there. Where oh, that yeah. was. And now the new. Um, the other kind of interesting thing is that the, the 3D makerspace they haven't, um, they've opened but haven't really used that much and they have a nice 3D printer and some, some technology but that'll be, um, there's a local resident who runs a 3D um, printing center at his company in New York and he's offered to, to do adult programming. So the library will have children and adult programming for 3D printing and, and you know that kind of stuff. So really exciting to have the space to do that. Any other questions for me? Great. Thank you all for the very detailed updates. And thank you all for doing your liaison work, <laughs> getting there and actually covering for each other when people are out of town. And um, it's, it's really great to sort of have, as we know, these projects are all connected. It's really good to have sort of connected thinking across our, across our committees and boards. Um, so with that, uh, follow-up items. The, rate, the only follow-up item I know of is that the last meeting we talked about the pipe in um, in the lake, and I understand it has been removed. Yeah. Um, the resident who asked actually saw it being removed. He was watching. He was yes. watching. So, Wait, there you go. I miss? The, there was a on the um, on the west side of the of the dam. 
there was a pipe sticking out of the water. Oh, I thought you said a pike. Fish. No, a pike. Oh, a pike. Really and it, 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 we thought it was like maybe left over from the construction, but it was sticking out of the water, and the resident asked about that, and and, and our, our crack DPW team went and uh, went and took care of it, and he was there to watch it. So, um, I, it's, they not, it's, it's not clear what it was for. It was not clear what it was for. It was there was Detroit. Uh, so, yeah, it was something, but yeah, it, it, it's not even it's not even clear it was from the construction. It could have flowed downstream from something else. So, in any case, good. Any other follow-up items we need to cover tonight? Um, boards and boards and commission. Uh, any addition in, or changes tonight, Ms. Rubin? No, Mayor. Okay. Um, boards and commissions. We have um, a CBA rep for EDAC. We have a CDA member. And we have a second alternate for municipal and a second alternate for parks. So, good. Thank you. Um, we are moving on to ordinances. We have nothing for first reading tonight, but we have a second reading tonight for ordinance 02 23 05. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, our Ordinance that is on for second reading this evening is Cranberry Township Ordinance Number 02-23-05, an ordinance amending an ordinance fixing the salary, wages, and benefits for various officials and employees of the Township of Cranberry, providing for the manner of payment thereof and ratifying salaries and payments to employees and officials previously paid. Um, so this is a standard ordinance we approve a couple times a year. Does anybody have any, any member of the Township Committee have any questions? or comments on this before we open it up to the public. Okay. Hearing none, if any of the members of the public would like to open it up for you to comment on ordinance 02-23-05. Seeing none, we'll close public comment on that. Okay, at this point, we'll just need a, a motion and a second. I'll move. Second. Thank you. We'll move on to roll call. Mrs. El Badawi? Yes. Mrs. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. And Mayor Fronte? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. We move on to um, uh, items, consent item consent resolutions, item 12A through 12J. Is there anything anybody would like pulled out separately? Hearing none, um, take accept a motion for items 12A through J on the consent agenda. Skinnerum, thank you. And a second. Second. Mr. Scott, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to roll call. Mrs. El Badawi? Yes. Mrs. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. And Mayor Fronte? Yes. Thank you, Gina. Excellent. We will now open the meeting to public comment. If any members of the public would like to speak, please come forward. This is our chance to listen and for you to speak. And uh, welcome, thank you. And just as a reminder, being rude, our job is to listen. Your, your job is to speak. <laughs> and uh, and three minutes when you when you when you begin. And make sure you push the right button on the display when you're. Ready. And welcome. There we go. All right. Uh, my name is John Glennon. I'm the vice president for uh, Cranberry PBA 405, which uh, represents all of our offices here in Cranberry. I'll bring it to attention to some things we have coming up, some events we got going on. We have uh, coffee, a co coffee with a cop that we're uh, co-sponsoring with the police department. I believe that's going to be March 19th. It's, it's coming up uh, Sunday, uh, starting at 9 o'clock. So if uh, anybody in the public wants to come out, come meet us. We'll be there. We'll uh, be glad to talk with you about whatever you want to talk about. Um, another thing we have uh, currently going on is our PBA scholarships. We do these every year. Uh, we now have the Officer Todd C. Allen Memorial Scholarship, um, in addition to the George C. Noble Memorial Scholarship. Both of these are for $1,000 each. Uh, they, the people that are uh, eligible for these are seniors at Princeton High School that are Cranberry residents. So they can uh, apply for these scholarships. The due date for this is May 1st. Um, if you want more information on that, you can go to our website, cranberrypba405.com. And also on our social media, you can also find information there as well, which will take you to our website. Um, not, in case everybody's not aware, we're uh, not just only on Facebook, we're also on Instagram and Twitter. 
So if you don't have one or the other, we've got multiple different outlets now where you guys can keep up with our upcoming events and uh, reach out to us if you have any uh, questions, concerns, or anything like that really. And I'm happy to put something in the mayor's update about those two items. Yeah, I can so, uh, just... I'll, I'll grab them off okay. social media. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And well under your three minutes. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to speak? Hearing none, we will close the public comment. Um, action items. Um, Ms. Up, by the way, I heard I heard a couple. I heard um, Parks wants to come to a TC meeting. I heard um, uh, EDAC would like to come specifically to the April 10th TC meeting. Um, and those are the ones I got. I have one more, and that may be for Denise to ask the engineer about the porous concrete or the porous material. Okay. Thank you. Good. Did anyone catch any other action items not previously addressed? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'd like to accept a motion to adjourn as prompted by the grandfather clock. So to adjourn. Dr. Rogers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.